Hi there, friends. Fantastic show today. I know you heard of a beef bourguignon. Have you ever heard of a chicken bourguignon? No. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. We're going to make a chicken bourguignon right now. All right. Well, let me show you how easy it is to make. Same thing as making a beef bourguignon. It's like we're making it with chicken. We're changing a few things. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make it because so many people love to make chicken. We're going to go and get going with it. So I got chicken thighs and chicken legs that have been floured in a, um, a seasoned flour. We got a little flour in there, and we're going to saute them in clarified butter. If you don't have clarified butter, just use a, a regular good cooking oil because you don't want to burn. Regular butter will burn, right? And right here, my friends, I got a, 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 a pound of uh, uh, thick bacon that I've been um, rendering its fat. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put some onion in there. And I got a, a too big onion. You know, I like onion. <laughs> I like the big onion, my friends. We're going to use onion. Might as well use a big one. And uh, we're going to caramelize those guys. They're going to take a little while. We're going to caramelize them. And uh, we're also going to use some pearl onion. Well, I'm, I'm going to use it. Really, I, I love we we'll put some onion in there. But they're only good if we caramelize, if we make them sweet, right? Uh, let me check the temperature of my car, of my uh, butter right there. I'm looking about, uh, yeah, I have it right there. I'm looking about 375, and I'm going to saute the, um, the the meat now. No skin, my friends. No skin. I'll talk about the mise en place in a minute. No skin. Skin skin is wonderful if you're roasting a chicken, right? If you're uh, grilling a chicken, the skin is wonderful, right? Because you get a nice and crispy. You get all the fat out of it. But when you're braising it, which is what we're going to do right now, we're going to braise it. That means submerge in liquid. When you braise the chicken, you don't need the skin, my friend. You really, really don't need the skin. Otherwise, the skin has got a lot of fat in it. And unless you can get rid of that fat, it's just going to be soggy fat. And you know what? If I'm going to have fat, friends, let it be bacon fat. Let it be butter. Okay, but not chicken fat, okay? If you think it tastes good, maybe years, you, you know, years ago, probably chicken fat was pretty good. As a matter of fact, I know it was. It, it really tasted good. Today, chicken fat, uh, not so good. So we're going to salt and pepper. We already salt and pepper the flour, but we're going to put a little bit more right there on the chicken, right? I mean, uh, clarify butter, remember? It doesn't burn. That's why we use it. Um, we're going to make sure those... Those things. Uh, you know what? I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move. I can leave it right here. It'll be fine. This is gonna take a little bit longer to caramelize the onion. This burner is not as big as this guy. What else do I got? I got um, pearl onion. You don't have to put them. I got a uh, uh, purple and regular onion. You don't have to use them. They kind of cool and they cook wonderfully, right? I got whole garlic cloves. We don't need to chop it up. It'll be just fine. I got mushrooms. And I got baby portobello and regular mushroom. I just want to show you something real quick, friends. When you get a, um, a portobello mushroom or, or, or a mushroom and, you, and you're braising it, braising it in means submerge in liquid. Just wondering if that burner is big enough here, friends. You know, not so crazy about the burner here. I'm going to put it over there, friends. I'm this one right there because this burner is not big enough. You know, the, the, this, all this stove, this fantastic stove that I'm working was got different size burner. The one in the front has 17,000 BTUs, much bigger, and they, they're going to give me a better caramelization. Um, oh, I was going to talk about the mushroom. I'll talk about the mushroom in a second. Don't worry, I won't forget. So if we braise them, which means we submerge them in liquid, you don't want to slice them because if you slice them after 45 minutes to an hour of cooking, they disintegrate and you got nothing. So what we want to do is uh, we want to cut them. It, if it's a big one like that, you're going to cut it in six pieces or eight pieces, depends how big it is. It's much easier to cut the mushroom this way than if it is on the top of it. It's much easier. And then if you want to cut it in, in sixes, all you got to do is this. You see, look, a child can do this. Okay, so we got mushroom uh, quarters. We got potatoes, little potato, novel potatoes, you know, unless they're very, very, very small. They leave them whole if they're very small, otherwise you cut them in half, otherwise they're not gonna cook. All right? Because remember, this is not beef bourguignon. The beef bourguignon cooks for three hours. This chicken bourguignon is only gonna cook for uh, an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. That's all it needs to cook. 
It's not, it's not like we're tenderizing a chuck roast, okay? Doesn't need to spend that much time in there. All right, friends? And, and then we got some parsley, and then we got some wine. But I'll tell you what we have to do, friends. We have to wait for the onion to caramelize. So you know what I'm going to do? Since I got the space, I'm going to put this in there, too. I got the space in there. Could you do everything in the same pot? Yeah, you can do everything in the same pot. Just take what I would do, though, if I only have one pot and I'm at home. If I only have one pot and I'm at home, what I do is I do the chicken first, then I remove it, make sure my pot is clean. You don't have any residue or flour in the bottom. And then you do everything. You put the onion. You keep the chicken on the side, right? You have it. It's ready to go. And then, you, uh, and then after that, you take the chicken and you put it back in there. So we cannot, at this point, friends, move forward because we got to wait for the onion to caramelize. If they're not caramelized, they're not sweet. Okay? Remember, onion is always number one unless there is bacon. Don't forget, onion number first, always unless there's bacon. Bacon then becomes number one. Bacon rules. <laughs> bacon and butter. Oh, yeah, bacon and butter rules. Anybody who uses bacon and butter in their cooking, you know it's going to be good, right? All right, my friends. I'll come back in a few minutes. I'm just going to get this nicely caramelized. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go on this burner right there. See? I'm going to take this pot right there. I'm going to move it right there. woo -hoo -hoo. There you go. You see? And then we're going to put the whole thing together. Really, really simple. We're going to wait for it to caramelize a little bit more. Okay? I want some better color in those onions right there. Okay? I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay, friends. Well, the onion have caramelized enough. So now I am going to put the mushroom. I got to get rid of the water in the mushroom a little bit. And uh, what's going to help me do that is my garlic salt. I forgot my garlic salt, friends. But I got it right there somewhere. Somewhere. Here it is. I forgot my garlic salt. I love garlic salt for this. So here's what we're going to do, friends. We're going to get rid of the water in the mushroom. Okay. And that's going to take a few minutes. And, uh, and the salt is going to really help us. In the meantime, it's going to continue. So I'm going to go away for a minute so I don't bore you with, uh, <laughs> with stories. But um, we, uh, we're going to get rid of the water. Oh, one thing I'm going to tell you, friends, because I have a little time, is today I'm using the roasted chicken stock. And what's the roasted chicken stock? Look how beautiful that is. This is not your typical chicken stock, friends. See that? So roasted chicken stock. What's the roasted chicken stock? It's the chicken stock then where we took the chicken bone and we roasted them. Very dark color caramelization with tomato paste. It's going to give it body. It's going to give it some amazing flavor. And, uh, and, and, and this is what it is. So believe me, this has an amazing flavor. And um, we have a video. We released a video uh, not too long ago about how to make a roasted chicken stock. If you don't have a roasted chicken stock, what I highly recommend you do, my friends, is you, uh, you use regular chicken stock or chicken broth, whatever you have, and you add a little bit of tomato paste to it to give you some body. You would be amazed. You know, some people said, oh, it's tomato soup. You know, they, they don't know anything about tomato soup. If you don't want tomato soup, you watch my tomato soup recipe. That's tomato soup, okay? Otherwise, uh, this is a, a, a stock uh, where you have so much more depth, more of a, like an Espanol, for those of you that are professional, you understand what I'm talking about. But to, to add tomato paste into a stock, chicken or beef, it gives it more, much more depth and of flavor, I promise you. Well, you know, the mushroom I've reduced enough for my liking. Uh, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the wine. Now, you don't have to put the wine. For those of you that don't drink any wine, especially if you're not going to have a great stock like that, you don't have to put the wine. Um, but, but, oh, before I do that, <laughs> always put the garlic first. Put the garlic first. I'm putting the whole garlic cloves, okay? 14 of them. I don't know. I didn't call them. Just a few, right? You don't need to cook it very long. If you could be here right now and smell this, mamma mia. You know what I forgot? I, I always got to forget something, right? I always got to forget something. I got fresh herbs. Thank goodness. I didn't forget them. I just forgot to put them on the <laughs> I forgot to put them on a the cutting board, right? I got a little bit of rosemary and fresh thyme. I get chopped fresh thyme. 
So, and I'm smelling, I'm like, hold a minute, you're not smelling, you're not smelling, what are you not smelling? You're not smelling the herbs. The idea is to get your mise en place ready. The problem is when I get ready uh, on, on the camera, I don't want to take ingredients out too soon because they're going to dry out. So anyway, forget about it. Forget about it. That's my New York accent. You like? Forget about it. How you doing? Anyway, wine. I got Shiraz wine. You like my New York accent? Not bad, eh? Um, this is about a half a bottle of Shiraz. I love a full body uh, wine. You can use a Cabernet Sauvignon. You can use whatever wine you want in here. Uh, but we got to let it reduce, friends. We got to let the wine reduce. That means we got to get the alcohol out of there. So what I like to do is I like to take a, um, a spatula, clean the side of my pot, you see? And we're going to let the wine reduce. We're going to make a wine reduction a little bit. Then we'll put the chicken, then we'll put all the vegetables, and then we'll put the stock, and we're going to continue cooking it. We're going to give this a minute, a minute and a half to reduce, okay? We'll be back in a couple of minutes when it's all reduced. Okay, friends, the wine is reduced at least by half, so I'm going to add my carrots. I cut some carrots in there, and then I'm going to put, put the potatoes, okay? Red and white potatoes, it doesn't matter. If you, uh, uh, what color they are really, they're like new potatoes, they're very low in starch, but they're perfect for that, right? And then we're going to put a little bit of stock. So remember, regular chicken stock, if, if you don't have a roasted chicken stock, but if you don't, you try to make it, you, I promise you folks. I got three of them right there, I'll show you how we're going to go about this. Then we're going to put our chicken right in there. We're going to submerge the chicken. I love this. This is delicious. Ooh, hey, don't lose the chicken. <laughs> Somebody left a comment the other day. I thought it was so funny. Uh, well, not really funny. It was kind of strange, actually. Uh, he said, uh, oh, you dropped something on the, on the stove, and you picked it up, and you put it back in the stove. You should never do that. All that dust in there. Or well, I thought I, I wrote it back in the comments. So maybe, maybe you stove got dust in you. Mine don't have any dust. Mine is clean like my pot. So if I drop something in there, I'm very happy to put it back. Okay, my pot, my stove right there is just as clean as my fry pan. So you clean your stove. I told him you should clean your stove because mine doesn't have any dust. Check this out, folks. We're looking good, right? You're looking good now. Now, what do you think? How about one more, How about one more, one more, one more. I want to really submerge, okay? I am submerged now. So now, friends, <laughs> this is going to be good, let me tell you. Let me tell you, you know, a little more rosemary would be perfectly fine with that. Oh, a little parsley, and we're going to put some more at the end. We're going to be fine with that. So we're looking good, right? A little salt, a little pepper. Anybody can do this. It's nothing complicated. I didn't do anything complicated. That's the whole idea. Remember, folks, this is not a cooking channel to, uh, to show you how good we can do things. Are we, professional chef, no. This is for you guys to go in the kitchen and do Because if you cannot do this, then uh, we got to have a talk, okay? Because this is really nothing. Right? Saute the chicken with a flour, right? Put it in there. The only thing you may have a little bit of an issue with it is your stock. But remember, check out that video. Okay, so now, we've we got to thicken this. If we're going to put flour, we're going to put the flour now. Most of you know my trick already because you've watched the channel a few times. But for those of you that have not watched your channel... A, th a few times, you're going to be wondering, how are we thinking this? Where are we thinking this? You could do it at the end with a little bit of cornstarch and or our root or tapioca paro, any one of those thickener. Or you can put a little flour in there. Now, the flour that I have on top of the chicken is good, but not enough to thicken this. So if we're going to put flour, we've got to put it in now. If you were to take flour right now, friends, and just put it, if you were to just take it right now and put it in here like this, you'll have a catastrophe, right? But so for those of you that have seen my channel before, you like it, you go like this, you take a little strainer, don't put thumb on the side too much, because that doesn't belong there. And then look, you go like this with a whisk, okay? And you go like this with a whisk, and you incorporate it very well, and before you know, it's all perfectly well incorporated. So what you have to do at this point, friends, at this point what you have to do is you have to mix a little bit, because that thick, thicker, the part right there is on the top, and you're going to think, oh, well, it's really thick enough now. Well, you got to be careful because all in the bottom, 
all in the bottom, it's not that thick, you see? So, you pay attention. You know, it's starting to look beautiful. Look at this, Wendy, see? That's why I love to use the roasted chicken stock. Not only does it have more flavor, but it has more body. So, flour, keep an eye on it. You'll do whatever you want to do with it. You may add a little bit more toward the end if you think it's too liquid. Right now, we're just going to leave it the way it is. It looks, it looks like a million dollar. It smells like $10 million. I don't know what that smells like, but it smells good. Mm. Friends, we're going to let this cook for about 45 minutes to an hour. And then when we come back, I'm going to serve, serve myself a serving. All right? So we'll be back. Don't go anywhere. All right, friends. What well, about an hour? It takes about 45 minutes to an hour. You got to check it out, okay? And it's cooked. It's beautiful. It smells amazing. And uh, check, you know, a good way to check is um, to make sure that your, your onion and your potatoes are cooked. And if you cut them, like I say, cut them in half. You got no issues. So I'm going to help myself to a beautiful serving. I usually like to take a thighs and, uh, and a leg. And, uh, and I think I'm going to grab this, uh, this tongue right there. Very simple, right? And then I like to dig in for some potatoes and carrots. Let me tell you, this looks amazing. And the red onion and then the regular onion right there. You see, look at this. Oh, yeah. Make it a beautiful plate. Right there, my friends, more potato, oh, <laughs> more potatoes and more mushrooms and more goodies, all right? This is like a, a uh, uh, one pot deal, like you don't have to do nothing to it. The only thing you may have to do, friends, is put a little bit of chopped parsley in here, make it look nice, right? And then maybe get yourself a nice sprig of parsley and put it right on here to give it a little freshness. You see what's right? You see right there? Pretty simple, eh? Right, right there, it's a beautiful dish, it's simple, and I'm ready to go. And then right there, my friend, look at it, see? Pulls right out. You don't have to do nothing to it. Look at this. This is going to be so tender, and it's going to be hot, so be careful. Ha oh. ha. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Ha oh. ha. Let me turn this off. It's hot, it's delicious. I was laughing the other day. Somebody says, when you're testing and you're burning yourself, I said, well, you know, it's hot. Look at this I think It's smoking. But I always said it's good. <laughs> Have you ever seen a, a YouTube chef testing and I go, eh, hey, not very good. Of course not. We cooked it. We cook it the way we like. Anyway, friends, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. We'll see you in the next couple of days with another fantastic video. Thanks for watching.